Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. You know, with my little aluminum split bushings complete in my last video, if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it. I can focus on all of these components here to start with the index mechanism for the table. First one I'm going to go after is part number 24. It's a very small, very simple little part, but there is a uh, philosophy to be learned or passed along before starting a part with intersecting holes. Let's go to the whiteboard, take a look at what that is. When drilling a component with intersecting holes, you need to think about exactly how the drill is loaded up. Although this part is small and the holes intersect at a 90 degree angle, they're not always going to be small, narrow, short, shallow holes, and they're not always going to intersect at 90 degrees. So here is the cross section of the part when it's complete. The front is drilled to a certain depth, threaded, and then there's a cross hole for the rod. Now the philosophy behind this, and I hope this makes sense, if you drill this front hole first and not break through, that's pretty straight, huh? And then you drill the back hole. As you come down with that drill, that drill is going to break through to a point. engaged in material and when that happens two things are, are very common either it's going to wipe the edge off the tool depending on the steel of course or it's going to deflect and deflection is probably the number one thing you can expect especially with a very small tool so instead of this coming straight through the part and leaving the other side of the part where you think it's going to it could possibly be influenced by the load on this side of the drill and do this and come out so when you do a part like this Drill this hole first, and when this one breaks through, it will break through a lot cleaner and equally. Make sure you have a slight drag on the quill or the tailstock as that hole breaks through. It is going to have a tendency to want to pull itself into the existing hole and possibly crash the other side or snap the tool. Let's go out to the mill and start there. Part number 24 complete, we're going to move over and do part number 27. I'm going to make this piece the way I want to see it done. It's going to be 062 in the front so that it can go through this little guy right here. But in the back I'm going to enlarge it a little bit, drill and tap it, and use a threaded stud to create the thread required on the end to engage with part number 10. So let's get over to the lathe, number 27 coming up.
Component number 27 complete. Component number 23 was done in a previous episode, so was number 15. 62 is a commercial screw. Let's take a look at number 21. I'm going to do this on the end of a bar and a rotary table and part it off in the lathe and then we'll be done. 21's next. This is what the feed arm looks like on paper. And I'm doing this from a half inch diameter piece of brass in the rotary table. Now see if you can follow along with this particular setup. The rotary table is currently aligned to the spindle. Zero to the spindle. The half inch stock is in the vise. The vise was free floating and I had to indicate the part true to the spindle with the vise free floating. Put an adjustable parallel in the back so that I could control accurate X movements. And by squeezing the parallel in the back or extending it, I could control the Y movements. When I had the part directly under the spindle, which is where I want it right now, I put a solid stop on the table, locked it in place, or at least trapped it, and secured the screws on the adjustable parallel. Right now I'm directly over the center of that part, but that's not where I want to be. This is just reference. And back to the bench. Where I want to be is directly over the center of this guy right here. So instead of dialing off center with the XY controls on the bridge port or on the mill, I'm going to have to shift from the center point of the material about 110 thousandths off center. And I will do that by putting 110 thousandths worth of blocks or field gauges or whatever you have to against the back of the material or against the back of the vise, excuse me, and shift the entire vise one way or the other. This will then be home. I can drill that, I can ream that, I can interpolate this boss, I can remove all of this material, and I will be on center for the rotary actions to cut this side and the rotary action to cut this side. When complete, all I need to do is shift 250 from that point to hit that radius. Then it's over to the lathe to part it off. Sounds easy, should be quick. Let's do it. The rotary table itself is still true to the spindle. The whole setup has been pushed towards me. 109 thousandths, these are the shims right here. And a 109, that's arbitrary number. Could be 110, could be 111, could be 108, it doesn't matter. So long as the part fits within the confines of your material, your starting place is not really important. Just don't move the rotary table, only move the part. I'm going to deck this off. I'm going to create the 188 boss that's on the print, and then I can shift this vise accordingly back and forth to create the 7 degree draft angles on both sides. Actually, it's a little greater than 7, but I'm going to go with 7 and call that a day. 7 degrees, 7 minutes, 7 seconds. Let's see how it ends up.
slight change of plans here. I'm going to put the holes in before I move the setup. I feel everything will just be more visibly accurate that way and cosmetically uh, aligned. Camera is now behind the machine, so that's why things may look different. Okay, now I'm going to put this hole right here directly over the center of the rotary table by moving the vise that way, 250 pounds, because it's over the center of this hole right now, and it's got to be down here to blend the end. You could probably do this with a file, belt sander, drum sander, however you want to do it, but just for yucks, I'm going to do it right here on the rotary table. I put a small cosmetic chamfer around the top of this boss just because it looks better than hand filing it on. Now I'll shift the setup, finish this to length, and it's just a matter of parting it off and cleaning it up. Relocating the vise to the 250 center. Like I said before, I'm going to measure the thickness of these. I know these is 109, and I'm going to measure the height of the adjustable parallel combined, the stack. Put something in there that's 250 less, and now the part will be over the center of the rotary table. Vice is now shifted by 250, and it is this area right here that I need to address. I need to start at plus 7 degrees and end at minus 7 degrees, 180 away. Table is 0, 0, about that hole, about the little hole. And, uh, counterclockwise on the cut. Let's do it. And that is a wrap for the millwork. Let's take it back over the lathe, part it off, and clean it up. I like it. Got a quick look at the part before I part it off. I am not going to film the parting operation. It is getting late, and I want to get this piece done. It's just going to be put in a collet, parting tool moved over, and away we go. I'll be right back with the part. This is what you should have at the end of the parting operation. I just parted it off and wiped it across some 320 emery, clean up the back. Now let's put it together. And I got to tell you, I've seen a few of these online, and this whole mechanism sits right here on the end of this guy right here. This whole thing sits right there and oscillates back and forth. What they've done, and what I have to say I disagree with, and I'm not sure who designed this or scaled this down, otherwise, great kit, but capital mistake. They have used the thread of an 080 screw. Now, that's a really small screw, one and a half millimeters. <laughs> one and one half millimeters. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. They have used the screw as the pivot for the paw, and the linkage arm. So you can see per print an 0625 hole with an 059 screw provides an opportunity for an awful lot of movement. And when I put this together, which I'm going to do and I'll get right back to you, 
I am not going to be happy with it. I can promise you that. Stick around. Assembled, this is what the part will look like. And let's take a look. Look at that. That is... That's the right to print. That is absolutely spot on nominal right to print. And where I'm from, that is no bueno, amigo. Not even close. Now what they've done here, aside from using the screw as the locator, the screw needs to pass through all of these components and through this block and trap the little rod. So yes, you could take some of that slop out by shortening the screw. But that is a slippery slope, my friend. I don't know if you want to go that route. So my plan right now, and I just can't live with this, is to take this little block here and reverse it. I'm going to turn it around and put the screw in from this side to retain the shaft. And I'm going to make a block with a little bit longer protrusion that comes through both of these pieces and is capped by a washer. And that is the plan. So I will jump over to the lathe real quick, duplicate this block and make a washer. And I will be right back and we will see what happens. Actually, the other modification is going to be the pole itself, this little hook, question mark, comma looking thing, and the new feed arm linkage, this guy right here. I'm sorry I'm shaking around like that. This is really hard to hold still. It's not as bad as it looks. Those holes where this screw goes through are going to be opened up to about 2.75 millimeters, two and three quarter millimeters. How's that staying consistent? I'm going to open it up so that the shaft of the new part here will pass through and these will have a positive uh, surface to locate on. It'll only take a couple minutes, and I'll show you how I'm going to locate those features. They're kind of small, and i got a trick up my sleeve for that. might make your life a little easier. So when I get to that, I'll film it. Well, just for yucks, I thought you might want to see where that goes beforehand. That slides right on here. And the little gear fits on there afterwards. And as the arm oscillates, come on, start oscillating. I can almost not even feel the weight of these things. How about we put that on the correct orientation? How about that? <laughs> I am falling apart right before your eyes. Stick around. Joe Pied self-destructs today right on video. I think I need to go get myself a couple of chocolate chip cookies and take a break. Here we go. All right. Now, as this arm oscillates, this little paw on the end... Climb over those teeth and reset and continue to push. And as it pushes, that motion is actually turning the lead screw. And when the lead screw turns, the table moves one way or the other. So that is the feed mechanism driven by the intermittent movement of the ram. The ram will control that little lever. Should be pretty cool when it's completely done. Anyway, let's take these pieces and modify them and make it better than it was because that is just not going to work for me. Nope. My method for locating these little holes in a real short order, put it on your fixture plate and locate it by eye. Completely by eye at this point. Nothing means nothing. I've got a gauge pin in my drill chuck. I'm going to come over and I'm going to put a general location on this fixture plate close to that hole. Doesn't have to be right on top of it, just get close. Once you 
once you're happy with the placement of that pin lock the table down X and Y lock everything down zero your digital zero your dials just make sure everything is nice and tight Part out of the way, take the pin out of the drill chuck. Pop a hole in your fixture plate the same size as the hole in your part. I try to go deep enough with my center drill to create a chamfer on the top of the hole so I don't have to chamfer it after the fact. Make sure everything is locked at this point, okay? Keep it locked. With a hole successfully drilled in your fixture plate, go get that pin that you used initially. Put the pin through the part, put the pin through the fixture plate. Um, you are now on location. Do not let the pin fall through the fixture plate. That would be not a, not a good thing. Okay. I am putting a block under the fixture plate so that the pin doesn't fall through. There you go. Now the hole that you want to work on is directly under the spindle because everything is locked. The part is not going to move when you tighten it down. And we're just going to go tighten it down just a little bit. Just to make sure that last statement wasn't a lie. As long as that pin moves, you're in good shape. Clamp everything down, change your cutter accordingly. And now you can trust that that hole in your part is directly over the hole in your fixture plate without having to indicate anything. You are home. That is a great trick. I'm going to change the cutter over to an 093 and I'm going to open these ends up and make these pieces uh, my way. When you open up the hole in your part, be careful not to wipe out the hole in the fixture plate. It will defeat the purpose for the following components. There we go. This is going to be a very thin wall by the time it's done. And the Paul is next. And for those of you wondering, this is the one that I did manually, not the one I did on the CNC. Just can't bring myself to do that. Nothing's changed. The height of the clamp will change, of course. tail height of the clamp will change. I like to keep my clamps parallel to the fixture plate or the tail of the clamp where the adjusting screw is a little higher than the front. And for anyone curious, I did the pole and the block first in case the cutter cut oversize. I can match the
component feature on the arm to the hole diameter. There we go. After the modification, you can see what I did to the block here. Effectively reversed the geometry and added this stem. This stem now goes through these holes. Should provide a much better registration. I did make a washer for the screw that's going to hold it all together. And initially I started with this shaft right here, a couple of thousandths longer than I calculated it to be. And as I like or not how these components articulate, I can remove material from this end right here, push it back, and tighten up the gap in between all the parts. Now let's just snap these together and see what happens. I apologize for the close-ups of my fingers, but that's about as good as it's going to get. And if all went well, when I snug this screw up, everything will still move. Not like gravity's taking it or anything. This this does need to flop freely right here. This little guy needs to be able to just bounce around at its own pace. That being said, I'll probably run it across another piece of emery and thin that out just a couple of tenths to get that thing to flip around. Screw on the back. It could be a set screw, a grub screw, it could also be a shorter screw, so we're going to leave it at that. And I think that is plenty clear to see that the play in that is almost eliminated. There's still some free movement in there, but not much. And I think it's clear to see why that screw needs to be shorter. It doesn't want to run into the table. There you go. That is considerably stronger. It'll also be trapped in place with the spur gear that goes on there and then the handle that goes on to lock everything in place. There you go. Made it to the print, didn't like what the print looked like, made it my way, love it. Not saying it's better, I'm just saying I'm happier with it. So you do it however you see fit. Now I can say goodnight. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is Joe Pye at Advanced Innovations. Another couple of pieces off the list. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you are well and safe and happy wherever you are in the world. I'm out.